facilitating and uh, guiding the farmers to take farming as a business so that they can increase their productivity what they can get what they can harvest from an acre and sell and get good money but at the same time have have food security in their homes so we are focusing on uh, iron rich beans because we know iron rich beans they they have the, the iron and the zinc which is very important for nutrition and uh, more especially for for the blood it it improves the blood within the body if someone has anemia you can easily get better eating the iron rich beans it is also good for the pregnant mothers it is also good for the women especially when they have their monthly period they lose a lot of blood but it is also good also for the young children we are training them on good agricultural practices how to better plant in lines the weeding the disease control and then we go up to how they can harvest now after harvesting we also train them how they can store so that their produce doesn't get affected by the weevils. Now, after that, we train them the qualities, the produce quality, so that they can, they make sure that they get that quality to sell to the market and get premium price for the quality. But we also organize them, the farmers. You know, if the farmers don't have a voice, they may not bargain for better price. If they are not clustered together, they will not produce enough for the market. And people will always say there is no nothing to buy. So we, the, the farmer groups, we cluster them together so that they can produce and sell to the market at, at good profit. But the most important is to take farming as a business, but as a family business so that all the family is involved, both from planning uh, what to, to plant for the season, but also to use the benefits that they have got from the field. Over time we have realized that when these people save for a reason, when they have focused saving, they will always have some the money to reinvest and buy agricultural inputs to invest back into agriculture. But what has been happening is that the, the farmers save and it reaches the point of sharing and they share everything. They don't think of feeding the soil from where they have got this, this, uh, this produce. So we are training them that when they, when they save, they should have a package where they save specifically for agriculture reinvestment, reinvestment into agriculture. And indeed, at the end of the year, you find that some people have money. If you find a group with 40 million, 20 million, they can able plan for it. So we are also training them to have seasonal production plans. What do we need for this season? What inputs do we need? And how can we get those inputs? And then we are also uh, trying to change their mindset so that they don't only share in December or November, <clears throat> they share according to the season. So that during that time, they can use this money to buy their inputs to, to, to put back into their farming businesses. But we are also training the most important, quality grain. And that's where we come in with post-harvest handling. There, there is a lot of issues on post-harvest handling. They should do harvesting at the right time. They should do proper drying, not in, on the soil, but use tarpaulins. The storage using the hermetic storage, the pig's buds. And then there they can reduce even this what we call the aflatoxin poison that is causing a lot of problems in the, to our livers and a lot of cancers coming up. So we are also trying to fight that poison that comes with poor post-harvest handling.
beans are an important crop both for food security and income security here in Uganda and most communities survive because of beans. What has been so challenging is that most farmers grow beans their normal way so not much has been taught to them about the agronomic practices that they should follow if they are to earn from beans the, the way they should be earning. So as as Sakao Global 2000, beans is one of our focus crops and we promote it majorly because of food security to the farmers but also income security. We promote a number of varieties and uh, right here we are planting an iron rich variety which is called narrow bean one. So important to note is that beans require a very well prepared seed bed of a selected site, a site that should not be so rocky, a site that should not be flooded, a site that is with good loamy, well drained soils. And uh, farmers need to do proper land preparation if they are to get good results from the beans. So after proper land preparation, our beans should be planted well in lines following a recommended spacing. Uh, most farmers broadcast beans in their normal farming practices, but a practice we are discouraging because when you broadcast, first of all you use too much of the seed that, you'd, that would be used to plant a bigger acreage compared to when you plant your beans in line. A case in point, when you plant beans in line, you can use approximately 30 kilograms of beans per acre. But if a farmer is broadcasting beans, they can even use three times of the beans you use when you plant in line. So the correct spacing for beans is 50 centimeters between lines and 10 centimeters from seed to seed. We do help our farmers. We give them simple ropes which are demarcated to make it very easy for them to, to know where to place the seed and where to start the line from. So through line planting, farmers are able to use less seed. Farmers are able to achieve the optimum plant population that should be within a given acreage. And it is very easy to carry out other agronomic practices like weeding, fertilizer application, spraying, and harvesting, among others. It is also important to plant in lines because there is no competition for light, for nutrients, as would be where beans are broadcasted. So we do very much encourage our farmers to plant the beans in the lines so that they can achieve much more yield compared to when they broadcast. So it doesn't end on planting in lines. We do realize that most of our soils are depleted, so we encourage uh, farmers to apply fertilizers. And there are different types of fertilizers. There are those that we can use at planting. For example, like now, the farmers are planting using NPK fertilizer, which is crop specific, one of the blends from grain pulse. But there are other fertilizers that can be used, including DAP, but also farmers can also use their own manure, or composite, what we want is to ensure that we supplement our soil to enhance fertility. And after fertilizer application, for as long as if the, the, the field was very well prepared, what the farmer needs is now do monitoring to check the germination and ensure that weeding is done timely for as long as the weeds have started emerging. We should not wait for the beans to flower so that we can start weeding, no. So weeding should be done timely and frequently. And after that, we can control pests using a, a simple pesticide, for example, cypermethrin, to ensure that our beans are not affected by pests like flies. And we also encourage our farmers to keep monitoring their fields because when, for example, it rains so much, beans are very susceptible to fungal infections. So we do encourage farmers, especially at podding stage, they should be able to apply some fungicide to ensure that the pods do not rot or fall out. And after that, the farmer will just wait, see, wait to harvest and enjoy the, the returns from the field.
So beans are really not a complicated crop. All we need is just to take a little care of them and then we reap. Yeah, we were built to thrive, yeah I think that we've all had